So there's St John's Park coming onto the Parramatta Football Stadium. They're up against Westfield Sports High School today, both sides from the Parramatta Junior District. Let's have a look at how both these sides line up. St John's Park from fullback at Citroni, then it's Long Sue, Durban, Daniel. Diaz is the 5'8", the half is spending. Then it's Sound, Selms, Kotowski, David, Janicenian, and then it's Mann and Books. Westfield Sports High School from fullback wearing the 18, it's Fairclough, and then it's Mamalotti, White, Marsh, Mamalotti. The 5'8 is McHenry, he's the captain, Cummins at the halfback. Then it's Gallagher, Albertini, Condic, Brander, Sawyer, and Levy. Your referee for today's Commonwealth Bank Cup clash at the Parramatta Stadium is Mr. Kelvin Jeffs. Of course, a lot of first grade Winfield Cup experience behind him and had a very good grounding in the Commonwealth Bank Cup, a local Parramatta Juniors referee, appropriate that he's here today. And of course, I'm joined by Peter Sterling as always. And this is Westfield Sports Highs from the break, from the kickoff. In fact, they nearly make the 40 metre line and you could not ask for a better start, Peter Sterling. You certainly couldn't. It was the captain leading the way, Diaz, playing in the headgear and he's made a break of 40 metres from the kickoff. And not the ideal start for Westfields and this compounds the problem. They get a penalty for inside the five. And straight away, St John's Park have gone pretty much a length of the field. That is, if this kick does fine touch. So, St John's Park running from left to right on the screen. Tap to be taken, centre of the Parramatta Stadium. Taking it forward is David for the St John's Park High School side. Not a bad decision, that. They were in centre field. Not an easy kick. The fact they took the tap means that the pressure is kept on. And that's a good break there from Bookshaw on the, court, on the edge of the ruck. A good attacking position now, St. John's, all the football early on. Selms back to the middle. Well, St. John's Park come to us today. I know that Mark Donkin, the Parramatta Development Officer, has spent a lot of time with them in the past week. It could pay off. A fairly good judge of rugby league. But a big moment for these boys. Uh, not renowned as one of the strongest schools in a very, very strong division. Of course, when you look at the likes of the Parramatta Maris and the heavyweights, Fairfield Patrician Brothers. However, that's not the ball game here today. Westfield Sports High School, what a, what a tremendous idea it is. Uh, and a lot of their side here today, uh, uh, baseballers, swimmers and uh, uh, athletics are their main gains. And I know that the Parramatta Club has put 10 juniors through year seven and hope to foster them. Their favourites, and of course, as you would well know, the Parramatta Centre three-quarter, Michael Butner. Yes, he has been season, Michael Butner, a representative player this year. And great to see Westfield's building a side. They're going to do it fairly tough in this competition, but you have to start somewhere. And they've now got the football and getting a penalty for the St. John's Park side inside the five. And Albertini throws the ball to his kick at a fine touch around the halfway area. Just looking at the uh, coach, of course, Peter, for the Westfield Sports High School side, Andrew Patmore. So they're fairly well off in that area. Yes, but they made a mistake here, a knock on. Kick didn't find touch. And Michael Daniel, the winger for St. John's, came up with the, the drop ball. Fortunately for Westfields, they will still get the scrum feed. The Westfields, they look very deep, prepared to spin it from the scrum base, and they do so. From the halfback, it goes to the 5'8", and he's prepared to use his centres. This is wide. He got the ball away. He tried to push the pass. It wasn't on. And Marsh can't handle. So we've got another scrum. First tackle. It was fairly adventurous play, to say the least. Well, they set it up very nicely, and you see a beautiful hand pass there to the fullback Fairclough coming in his pass was an ordinary one down at the bootlaces of his outside centre and it's fine to go to the back line but first tackle you don't want to come up with a mistake and Citroni also comes in from the back line spot and the sides really now just have to get themselves together get a good set of six going oh I like the way he hit the line to the 10 that's Isaac David this is Potts Bumping run, a good run, he makes the ad line. Into dummy half is the hooker. Nearly spilled it, but they continue with the wrap. And again, Isaac David makes it over the 40 metre line. And this is St. John's Park High School working away. They go through their 5-8 in D as he's the captain. A hit of a gap opening, it didn't come. And that is now playing the ball is Sue. Last tackle signal by Jeffs and they send the kick across the face of the field. Taken very well by jumper number one, in fact not playing in that position, Mamaliti is in fact playing on the wing. The fullback in number 18, however, is Fairclough. We'll pick him up throughout the call. In fact, that's him now with the football. I believe a very, very talented player 
is this young fellow from uh, from the Westfield Sports High School. That was a magnificent take from Adam Mamaliti over on the wing. It was a good kick across field. There was a good chase coming through from St John's Park. Everybody on side. But now the kick from Westfield's off the boot of Shane McHenry. He finds the fullback Citroni with a little bit of space to move, but Mamaliti comes up with a good front on tackle. Well, referee has seen a knock on. He was right on the spot, jogging on the spot. He saw it clearly. No doubt he had the correct ruling. Here it is. The player is tackled by Mamaliti, and the ball has definitely came loose. Well, it's actually a penalty there, isn't it? It's Mamaliti certainly had his hand in there and, and raked the ball out, which in this day and age is a penalty. Fortunately for Westfield, it was on the blind side of the referee. And maybe this is a little bit of poetic justice here, a win against the feed. Diaz, he stepped off the left, and then he straightened, and he looked for the halfway. The gap closed up. He was taken by the 5'8", Henry for the Westfield side. They're just sort of halfway. He got up and went again. So they make the extra look, the extra yards, and continue with the football, St. John's Park High School. Westfield seem to be a little bit bunched in defence at the moment. St. John's with opportunities out wide. Now they've scrambled Westfields. Now they're looking better. They use it now through Fennec. He's got Diaz on the outside, but there's two defenders bringing him to ground. Now the referee's seen another knock on, and he was spot on again. Kelvin Jeffs, no doubt about it. Both sides struggling to get their composure out there at the moment. Certainly nervous, first time on television. And at the moment, just making too many mistakes. I don't think we've seen a set of six in this game where the teams have, have gone through and held the ball for five and got a kick away on the last. They really must address their ball control. Here's a chance in open pastures. This is Mamaliti. He's wearing the number four, rather it's Mars. Marshy skirts the touchline, eventually takes the tackle of Sue. He gets up and plays it. Mamaliti and now Fairclough. Fairclough steps off the left and the right. He goes over the 40. I've been told by Andy Patmore, an outstanding athlete at whatever he does. And so they're still in possession, Westfield Sports. The ball was pushed. They've come up with it. Cummins has dived on the football. Well, I thought maybe perhaps that might have been knocked backwards. However, we can't argue with Kelvin Jeffs. He was right there. Well, they do look good, Westfields, when they move the football in their back line, but unfortunately, either in the movement or the next one, the play breaks down. They look like they've got a fair bit of speed out there and, and willing to throw the football, and they've got another one against the feet here and straight away have gone to the back line. That's fair close. Ball knocked down. It will be six again. Six more tackles. Very lucky. Fairclough has shown in the opening moments that if he gets open space, he's going to spell danger for St. John's Park. Now, they've got six tackles, and Andy Patmore, I know, stressed the, the simpleness of their play today. They don't get to play in the weekly competitions as most of the other schools do. So they haven't had that many games together. Fairclough has just come back from playing representative football in the metropolitan uh, representative scene in state schools. Kelvin Jeffs has let that one go. I thought he might have brought it back towards the opposition's goal line, which is, in fact, a knock-on. They go over the top, Westfields, into the in-goal area at Parramatta Stadium, and there's a fair bit of it, too. And the Blake that used to exploit it most was Peter Sterling. In fact, they did shorten them on you, I believe. Yeah, they... Well, I think they got them back to the right length. We might, we might have fudged a little bit. And unfortunately, on that occasion for Westfields, the kick just came off the side of the boot and went a little bit straighter than the kicker desired. End up going over the in goal or the, the dead in goal area. And now Books takes it 30 metres out and he's run very strongly the number 13 for St John's. This is the hooker, Kotowski. Kotowski gets up and plays. Dumb into the open, they come back to the blind from coming up. No yards made. St John's Park Day, they're on the third tackle. Here we go, Fennec. Gets it away, I believe it was Books that gets the kick in. Now Fairclough beats one, tries to get between two, throws a beautiful ball for Mamalini. he gets away from two, and three, back for Fairclough, he's still going, the boy can play, and now Westfield, well, the jumper number 18, he is one right out of the books, keep your eyes on him, we've seen two tremendous plays from him, Kelvin Jeffs, he signalled six more, I wonder if Westfields have realised it, they've got six tackles, they're on the launching pad, and this is Condick, and Condick straightens, he goes to within five metres, the steamroller gets up and goes again, he's held up on his back. Yes, the trainee came up with a try saver, he was getting to his feet, they've got numbers out to the right, if they can get quick hands, which they've done. 
A chance for them. Knockback has said no. Knock on. Like to see it again. Well, it was certainly a great opportunity there for Westfields. The pass from the halfback there over the head. Yeah, it's, it's one of those ones that could have gone either way. What about Mamaliti coming down the sideline here, stepping inside and beating three defenders with a blade of glass, glass to work on as they've won another one against the feed. They surely must score. Fair flow away from Mamaliti. Sterling just mentioned him. He chimed in beautifully. Mamaliti goes to the wing in this game. He picks up try number one. Appropriately wearing the one. We'll see it again for the Commonwealth Bank. One thing's for sure, they've got some very talented athletes in this Westfield Sports High School, even though they haven't played a lot together. Here it is, Peter Sterling, take us through it. It just shows how important a win against the feed is these days. Good dummy there thrown by McHenry. And the number three, Sue, came in for St John's Park when he needed to stay out. That gave them the overlap. Then it was just a simple pass draw the man and, and find the winger flying on the outside. He's done well, Mamalita. I like what I see from him. Moves into it, Fairclough. He hits it nicely. <laughs> Talent with a capital T. He goes back to join his teammates. They lead six points to nil. Commonwealth Bank Cup football on the nine network. A little bit about his record, David Fairclough. What about this for versatility? New South Wales pentathlete, champion, Jersey Fleet Canterbury 93, state swimming championships, nationals for athletics, decathlon and pole vault. So there you go. And he taken high. Mamalini was taken high, but the first contact was around the shoulders. Ben Cummins. I've been amazed so far, Mark, at the amount of scrums we've seen one against the feed. I think it's three or four three at the moment and you'd be lucky to see that in half a season of football there's a mistake made there by Westfield so the pressure had got once again off St John's who haven't seen the football for a long long time now Kelvin Jeffs is calling in the winger here for St John's Park who is Michael Daniel he's going to get I'd suggest a running caution this scrum's fairly well in place he's been told politely to keep it quiet St John Park have stacked the, the left hand side of the field perfect place to attack from center field scrum and they do that through diaz tries to step two or three players but well read in defense by westfields so here we go again and in the forwards department st john's park particularly books and i hope i'm pronouncing his name right and their front rower isaac david have really made some good yards well, they'll have an opportunity to do so again here they're the player penalized from westfields for picking the ball up in the ruck area Andres Diaz from 38 out right in front. He moves into it. He strikes the football. It's a spiraling kick, but it looks straight. Straight as a dart. They've reduced the deficit at 6-2. Westfield Sports and Johns Park on the Commonwealth Bank Cup. So Mr. Jeffs gets his back underway and Fairclough gets the kick in. I believe this might be young Diaz with the football now. And from the form of the goal kickers we've seen so far, both teams will really need to be careful giving away penalties within kicking distance. Fairclough and Diaz for their respective sides. There's a mistake made there by Sue, taking over the sideline, 30 out from his own line is a, is a bad mistake. Yeah. They've both struck the ball beautifully. Here it is here for the Commonwealth Bank. It's good defence there, three tacklers in. Wasn't a second tackle involved at all, the momentum took him across. But he had plenty of help from the defenders. As mentioned earlier, here we go again, though. I'll come back to that. Here's Fairclough. He came from blind and then to open, and they decide to use it. And here's numbers through Marsh. Marsh gets over the 20. He gets the ball away this time for the other winger in Mamalini, the brother of the fullback, wearing the one, in fact, playing on the other wing. So Westfields <laughs> from dummy half. This is Marsh, and Marsh tackles. Eight out, one in from touch. What can they do here? They take it forward through the eight, and just just looking for his number now he takes it forward for westfield sports i'm sure it's jumper number eight i haven't got him on the list here it's, it's Gallagher. Diaz, Here's a go. diaz goes over the 30 he goes over the 40 he makes the halfway oh good tackle he ran out of pace it was good cover defense managed to stay in the field of play they continue the wrap that was excellent play to stay in as again the play continues with david spinning out of tackles takes it 30 meters out good chase from philip mamaliti but good work from diaz to go to ground Okay. 
So that's Gallagher in number eight. For, St. for Westfield Sports. And that's his opposition player playing it there in Selmers. And the number 10, Isaac David, tackled 30 metres out. Ball back to Citroni. He gets to the 20 metres, beats one tackle. And this is the last one, so they'll probably go to the air mark. Last tackle. Books gets the ball away. For Isaac David, they're the two forwards that have been really impressive for St. John's Park. Now the second row of man. And the reason I'm having a little bit of trouble is a thousand changes due to a few injuries and so forth from both schools. So it's just trying to pick them up at the moment for you. Watching the Commonwealth Bank at home as Westfield's work out of the 20th an appropriate time to mention that in 1993, in 1993, the Commonwealth Bank Cup, the player of the year will receive $1,000 worth of Diodora. Great playing leisure wear. The winning school will receive $5,000 worth of Phillips electrical equipment to the school, $3,000 to the runner-up. So all vying for them, 444 sides in 1993. And here we go again through Westfield Sports. They're prepared to push it. That one goes into touch. Peter Sterling. Yeah, poor pass there from McHenry over the head of Philip Mamaliti. But again, Westfield's looking to go to their back line. They do look dangerous out there. It was a nice cutout pass if it had found the man. Created a two-man overlap, but unfortunately the ball just a little bit too high to be taken by the winger. Right in the middle of the stadium here at Parramatta. An absolute great venue for rugby league. I suppose it's only my opinion, but gee, what a great place. What a great venue for spectators and a great place to call from. Yeah, it's a great experience for these kids as well. As a game, we've seen another one against the feed. Really, the, both the coaches have got to get their packs at half-time and tell them to set much more solidly so that they're not pushed off the ball because that's happening consistently out there at the moment. I suppose he's a very big boy conduct and he's going to uh, probably tire in the latter second half and even towards the end of the first half, but he's made two runs, one close to the line, and they he proved very, very hard to put on the ground. And there's three players there, and a fourth one was nearly necessary. Huge lump of a lad. So now they can use it, Westfields, they use it through their 5-8 and then their half, and now they throw it through Fairclough. He picks up Marsh, he goes over 30, he goes over the 20, inside the 10 grid line. Last tackle signaled by referee Jeffs. Will they go to the air? They throw it wide, they're prepared to use it. Back for Fairclough, he puts it into the in goal area. How will it sit up? It goes dead in goal, and we'll come back for the 22 restart. Yeah, not the good option there. They, they had numbers out to the left-hand side. The runaround certainly wasn't needed. All that did was inhibit play, but this was the one beforehand which set up a great attacking raid. That's Marsh showing good speed. Great defense from Diaz and the fullback Citroni. They, they got their man very effectively. And the next play broke down with a pretty poor kick. So, here we go again. St. John's Park, and as Peter has said, both these sides very evenly matched, and both from the Parramatta District, they struggle to get towards the, the halfway line. David gets up and plays it for Sue. He comes across field. He looks to pass. He dummies and feints to pass and goes over the halfway. We're on the last tackle. They're in the center of the stadium. They go to Diaz. He's the captain, and he's the kicker, too. Drives it into the 20. The player turned his back to take it. He couldn't handle. Now comes back. Can he beat the first? Beautiful copy book tackle by the four, Justin Durbin. And the fact that Philip Mamaluti played at the ball and didn't catch it meant that all the chases were on side. It was a very good chase from Durbin. Got his man. Now Marsh tackled. Three defenders hanging off him for St. John's. We're getting into that danger area. Under 10 minutes to go in this first half. So the next scorer could be very important, especially if it is before the break. There's Big Condick. He was, he was picked up by three and barreled into the turf at the stadium. Big kick, but it goes straight down to Citroni. Citroni comes back, takes on the defence. Ben Cummins was there. The man that came in first, though, was his opposite in 18, David Fairclough. Here's a go for Westfield Sports. Yes, nearly an intercept taken by McHenry there. It's been a good battle between the two 5'8s. They're both captains. Just holding the ball up a little bit too long. And unfortunately for McHenry, he knocked the ball just out of grasp. The scrums are 8'4". With Westfields. Here's another one against the head. I'll, I'll get the stat from Ray O'Donnell in a moment. Here they go again, Westfield Sports. It's been a few against the head. This is the three. Shane White and Shane White wrapped up by Sue. He gets up and plays it. They continue to persist the blind side. No yards there for Russell Marsh. He gets up and plays it. 
through the second row are Albertini. Now they straighten through the eight. This is Gallagher. He made a tremendous barge towards the line about 10 minutes ago. Now the Albertini from dummy half works the blind side. He's got meters to work with. Back for Gallagher. He tries to make the 20. He goes over the 20. It looks like he can play a little bit too. There's been four, four against the head for uh, Westfield Sports, one for St. John's. So five against the head now. <laughs> That's making the scrums a contest. It's been a good push. It certainly is. And now an opportunity for Westfields with the St. John's players. Coming up with an infringement. He'll nearly score here. Bearclaw plays it. They use it. Long ball out this time for Mars. Room to move in between players. Made it look very easy. The play was set up on the previous play by Fairclough who put them in tremendous field position because St John's hung off him because I didn't know what he was going to do Peter Sterling let's see it for the Commonwealth bench well even let's go back to the play before it was a penalty given away by St John's on the fourth tackle an easy penalty run from the, the tap kick made 15 metres and a beautiful put out, cut out pass here by McHenry he's thrown a couple of these today this one certainly found its mark in the form of Russell Marsh and it was a simple run between the number eight and the winger comes into it and he hits it he hasn't done as well on this time in fact lost his mouth guard out the sock as well so back to halfway we go Trier was unsuccessfully converted 10 points to two Westfield sports in front of St John's Park there's the kickoff Jason Brander Condick to the 30. Albertini. Lever. 10 short of halfway. They use it through Cummins. Chip and Chase. Fairclaw looming up. He regathers. Magnificent fingertip control. By the headgear fullback. The 5'8", dodging, dodging rather, pivoting and swerving, going nowhere, eventually finds the three Shane White, who progresses the football a couple of metres. Into dummy half goes Albertini. Now the 5'8", chips McHenry, and St John's come up with position. And a shame that that kick wasn't as effective as the one we saw from the, the backline movement three rucks earlier. It was obviously a planned move because Fairclough was coming up on the shoulder unfortunately this little kick well we, you've never seen a kick go too high and that one was a fairly selfish one for himself he gave st john's a fairly easy catch and there's a replacement player out there in angelo carley in 14. so st john's park just before half time looking to get some fresh troops into the action so angelo carley on for st john's park in jumping up at 14. Well, andrew fennick took his eye off the ball there and he'll get a penalty here Stealing the ball, came up with, well, he's compounded the mistake. He dropped the football and then stole it with two minutes left on the clock. And now you'll see, after dropping the ball, steals the ball. A little bit close to this one, 32 metres out, but this is in front as well. No wind. If he strikes it as well as the first one, he shouldn't have too many problems. He moves into it, Fairclough. He hits it. It looks straight enough for me. Put up the flags and give him two points. Westfield Sports increased the lead to 10 points. They lead 12-2 on the Commonwealth Bank Cup coming to you from the Parramatta Stadium. And he's played well, but there's been a lot of guys out there who I've been fairly impressed with in this first half from both sides. The coaches will be hoping to, to get a, a more consistent effort from both their teams. Too much drop ball. Here's Fairclough. He's prepared to run across field, then go across and put players around him into a great position. Mars gets a ball away on the first tackle. It wasn't on. Well, you don't need to be throwing the ball around with a minute to go. You're, you're 20 metres out from your own line. I know that it's, it's lovely to watch and it's adventurous play, but with a 10-point lead, you must be happy with that at halftime and just wind the clock down. They're not doing a great job of it. They're keeping the ball alive, but McHenry, well, that's gone forward and has put pressure on his outside men when it didn't need to be. They've continued the wrap, Peter. He's got Fairclough on his in outside. Now he's been put into touch, Marsh. Well, Fairclough failed and faded from the blind side to the open. 
They go to half time. Here it is. Fair Clow. He came back inside for him, but then he was bundled into Tash Young Marsh. And uh, he was put paid to by Selm. So we go to the break. They'll go for some oranges. 12 2, Westfield Sports Ice and Johns Park. You're watching the Commonwealth Bank Cup on the Nine Network. Kelvin hey! Jeffs to get us underway for the second half. The short kick. Westfield Sports this time have first touched the football. They're in the centre of the stadium. They've got runners on blind and open. They work a very wide blind side. Eventually getting up and playing the ball is Gallagher. Now from the back of the ruck comes Lever. He makes a couple of yards and straightens the attack. This is Albertini and now they decide to use it through Cummins, through McHenry. And this is the centre, rather fair cloud. He's turned it up possession. Well taken the rebound there from Andrew Fennick. And no doubt the coaches at half time have been fairly impressed with their team's performance, but too many mistakes, quite a few errors and missed tackles. And I would think that the big talking point at half time would have been the amount of scrums lost against the feed. Would almost have had the scrums packing down in the dressing sheds to make sure that they were binding well, nice and solidly, go in, win the ball as quickly as possible, and get out to open field. He's played well, Hooks. Takes it 32 out on the last tackle. He's made ground every time he's touched the football. The ball back now to Selmes, who puts it high, but Fairclough straight underneath it, no pressure. Now Fairclough stands up the first beat to the second, takes two defenders in the form of Fennick and Durbin to bring him down just outside his 20-metre line. They make the third. Westfields, this is Donkick. Albertini from dummy half. They use it through Cummins. Now for Fair Clay. He's been covered up, wrapped up early this time, Diaz. He turned his back on the defence. He gets up and plays it. Shook him up a little bit. I think he's okay. Westfield still in possession. As Marsh struggles with the defence, then gets up and plays it. Albertini playing the dummy half role. They get the kick in. Nice looking kick too. It bounces three times. Heading towards that touchline. It's a beautiful kick. Well, Shane McHenry's had a very good game at 5-8-4. The Westfield sports side. He threw the pass that led to the, the try towards the end of the second half. And his kicking game has been fairly astute. This one in behind Michael Daniel. And Daniel allowing the ball to go over, knowing that if he touches it, it would be a scrum feed the other way. Took the odds to it. And now Andrew Fennick will feed. They are deep in their own territory, only 10 metres from their line. Diaz with the feed. Looks for the run around set play from the scrum base. They make it to the 20. Peeling from blind to open and straightening the defence for St John's. Wrapped up in the tackle by Fairclough. He's playing up in the front line. Cummins has gone back into the second line of defence. Now they'll switch around, or well, maybe they're playing two back there. This kick is driven up, it'll sit up for Fairclough. He turns it back now. He looks and stands up one, tries to get away from him. Eventually he's wrapped up by the opposite captain, Diaz. Three metres short of the halfway, Albertini takes the cheap yards. Makes it over into enemy territory. Cummins from dummy half. Now for Albertini on the fringe of the ruck. Rather Gallagher. Gallagher gets up and plays it for Cummins and now they use it through McHenry McHenry, McHenry struggles with them, throws it basketball style, they continue it through Marsh and now they look for it, this is Mamaliti making it towards the 20 metre line he comes back inside, the ball's still alive, takes three St John's defenders to eventually stop the progress, they're very clustered now, uh, the Westfield sports uh, side and this is Marsh taking it to the 10 metre line last tackle signaled by the referee they get up and play it Cummins to dummy half they use it through the 5-8 and captain McHenry he puts it in across the defence uh, and now it comes back with six more tackles chance for Westfield he's heading for the line he stands in the tackle they've got five more here's danger for them the 18 is fair club he'll go himself for sure Burrows down that's exerted pressure he's got it down and that's a try and that's his second and he can play rugby league all right along with a lot of other sports well the kick led up to that try by putting pressure on 
the outside man. He came up with a, a drop ball of St. John's winger. And we see two rucks later, just burrowing down. And that was the important thing. He got in low underneath the defenders. Good take there from McHenry. That's the kick I'm talking about. You see it put pressure on Long. He came up with the drop ball. He looked like scoring Philip Mamaluti here. But some good front-on defence, especially from Citroni, stopped that. But now fair clow, and you'll see that he gets down low. There he goes, down low, burrow, burrowing between the two players, and plants the ball. Ten in from touch, right on the 20-metre line. He moves in, and hits it nicely. It looks OK. It's getting away. It shaves the uprights and gets over. So Westfield Sports lead 18 points to two on the Commonwealth Bank Cup, ninth wide world of sports. All next week on Today. Yeah, great work there from the restart. Andres Diaz just put in the little 10-yarder through, and it was well cleaned up by Fennick. We said that these two sides were fairly evenly matched. Well, it's a big lead now, and if St. John's are going to get back into this game, they have to be the next scorer. Nice little touch there. It's just gone to 10 metres. They're perfectly judged. Penalty with St. John. Books comes in. He wants a quick tap. He gets the approval of the captain. He steps off the right and the left. He beats two and three. Heading for the line. Can he get there? No. He's pushed back eventually in the tackle. David to dummy half. He goes himself, burrowing one. They've got numbers to the right. They've only got to push it. They still haven't awakened to the fact a chase where well, you've got to say selfish football. Well, it would have been... Well, it is now, but it wouldn't have been if he'd have scored, I suppose. He went very close to, but I agree with you. I thought that left and right side, they had a, a good chance. That was Isaac David towing the ball through, and great work from McHenry. No, it wasn't McHenry. In fact, it was Russell Marsh who batted the ball over the dead ball line. The only good thing for St. John's is they will get the ball back from this dropout. It's a good drop kick, too. <laughs> Goes over the 50. McLeod. Fair Cloud took the dropout. 18 to the scoreline. Citroni, 32 metres out. He was hurt in the tackle. He's on his back. They're calling for attention. Coming on in jumper number 16. With the English style pants. He looks like he's got the Andy, um, rather well, the uh, Andy Courier shorts on. I'll tell you what, the bloke who's just left got those, the number four for St. John's Park. He's just taken a seat, Justin Durbin. This is Mio Sprack. Sprack. So St. John's Park through books towards the 20. Diaz is the dummy half. He comes to the open side. He beats Albertini. He puts it along the ground. He gives chase. It's still alive. It's come off a, a uh, Westfield hand. It's six more tackles. They're only 10 metres out. It's a chance for St. John's. They head to a very wide blind. Diaz, dummy, Spence goes himself. Steps under one, reaches out, can't get there. Into dummy half, goes long. Long from dummy half this time. He can't get it either. They've got numbers to the right. They've got a spinner. That's their third time. I think he got there. Barrowing run. The referee has given the, given the try. So St. John's got their first try of the day, courtesy of a run from dummy half. And uh, they got the four points that was all right on that occasion. Yes, it was. They worked hard for it again. I think that's Isaac David who scored the try. He was the man who towed the ball through and was denied. This time, got right down deep again. You see it just in the left of corner there, getting the, the ball down, so there's no doubt about it. Really should never have scored the try because there was a lot of defence there from Westfield. He did very, very well. In fact, uses the man who's played the ball as a, a nice little shepherd and got in behind him to plant the ball. So from way out wide, Citroni. He moves into it. In fact, it's Diaz. Diaz hits it. It gets away from him in any case. He comes back to halfway to join his mates. It's 18-6 on the Commonwealth Bank Cup. Westfield Sports, they're in front and cruising. Fairclough gets this underway. They go low on the on the attacking player. Bundled, wrapped up. You might just see a spring in the step with the St. John's Park players now. 
not from that run from Jeffrey Manu Wade, but they've, they've, they've got their first try on the board. They're within two converted tries. They can get another one and just get close enough. Might just put a little bit of panic in this Westfield side. That's one of the replacement players, Carly on. So plenty of changes made by both coaches in the last five or ten minutes. Angelo Carly gets up and plays it, and now they use it wide. Diaz gets between runners. He's been good. A little work of the captain and 5-8 for St. John's. Big five called for from uh, Kelvin Jeffs. They've lost it at the dummy half area in the scramble go down. Well, that's a poor play, the ball. It, it was a very lazy play, the ball. You see he has two or three attempts at. He's standing upright. It was David, the try scorer. He really put a lot of pressure on his dummy half. I can't blame him for knocking on. Didn't do his side any favours. This scrum has been turned right around and now it comes out. St. John's, will they come up with it? No, it was kept in the scrums. Butch came from the back of the scrum. He's been penalised. Yeah, it's breaking too early there, Fazef Butch. The scrum had screwed around and there you see the referee signalling that he had to stay intact in the scrum. Good work from the back row of Westfield kicking the ball back their way and the temptation was just too much for the lock forward. This kick, well, it's found touch. Has it been touched? No, it's a great kick. Okay. Fair clear. Gives us for Albertini for the restart. Cummins, set play coming up. Condic takes it to within seven metres of the line. Albertini to dummy half. They work the blind side. Is this fair clear? I believe it is. He plays it two metres out. What do they decide to do? Albertini has a go at it. He's pulled up short. Cummins on the open. They use the blind side. Try time coming up, is it? Well, what Penalty. a great tackle there. He had to score the number 13, Matthew Lieber. And there was only one defender there. And somehow he's come up with a try saver. Let's have a look at it. The winger. That is a sensational tackle, Michael Daniel. Ball and all tackle, close to the line. The inside men didn't do him any favours getting up quickly, and th that's a great tackle. So the restart, eight out from their own line. In St John's Park now. Behind on the scoreboard, but both sides evenly matched, as we mentioned earlier. Two sides, emerging sides in the Parramatta District, and Westfield Sports, very much like a, an American uh, college system with uh, the scholarship system, a sporting school through and through. They're working that blind side, perilously close to the touchline is Michael Daniel. They'll play it now. The important thing for St John's Park is that there's plenty of time left on the clock. They've got over 15 minutes left in this game. They're trailing by 12, so it's not as though they need to play panic football. Just get a good kicking game going, try and force a mistake down the far end of the field. When the opportunity presents itself, try to take advantage. Well, we saw Westfield open up 100 miles an hour. Here's Books again, Peter. Goes over the 40, he's eight short of halfway. Last tackle signalled by Kelvin Jeffs. Back for Little Diaz, he wears the six. He tries to find the line, he does the job. Beautiful kick from the Little Six. So we'll get a scrum and a chance, and they've had about five against the head, so there have got to be some chance. In fact, in total, I think there's been five against the head throughout the game, mainly going with Westfield. There it is, 9-5, the scrums, Cummins. Now he uses it for Mahengri. He, they swallow the dummy. He gets around one, Gallagher comes again. He got the pass away, Fairclough. They use it through the forest, Marsh. He crosses halfway and 40. He's getting away from the halfback. He's still going. He's wrapped up from behind. It was a good run by the four. Russell Marsh, they get up. They've got them at sixes and sevens. Can they use it? Shane White, he gets through them. Oh, beautiful tackle. Copy book stuff by Fennick. They need a quick play the ball. They get it. They try to use it. Fairclough, he's the danger man. But he's wrapped up as the troops assemble for St. John's Park. They use it now. McHenry, he tries to beat one. Gets a pass over the top for Cummins. Now it's picked up. Try puts it. Line open. But the pass was a little bit difficult. He could have maybe taken it from Ben Cummins. Yes, that was Daniel Gallagher losing the ball there right at the death. A good cutout pass there again from McHenry on to Ben Cummins, but the pass just a little bit too far in front. Two great try-saving tackles by St. John's Park there. Firstly, Citroni, the fullback, cleaned up Russell Marsh, 
And then, as you pointed out, Mark, Andrew Fennick, a, a great tackle when a try looks certain. This is the first one. Citroni showed good strength here. Marsh put down with no beg your pardons. Yeah, it was a great tackle. So, here we go. Diaz is feeding the scrum. They've won another one against the head by Jove. Cummins now. They use it. McHenry. Watch him go, Fairlow. Beautiful ball. That's a try. Shane White. He goes over. Quick hands. And this time they capitalise. It was through Fairclough. Again, he really has the defence in two minds. Well, you don't expect to lose the ball against a scrum feed these days. And it's happened consistently. And there you see that... The, very ordinary defence that they're really set up to win the football nobody has come forward because it's come as somewhat of a surprise but the one thing that Westfield Sports do very well is move the ball from Brett Cummins and Shane McHenry to the outside men very nicely they, they've got they throw lovely passes in front of the men so they can run onto the ball a nice torpedo style of pass and, and players like Shane White who's the try scorer there really do capitalize on that because they, they're getting the ball with space the kick unsuccessful, waved away by the touch judges. St John's come back to halfway. They're behind on the scoreboard by 22 points to six. Commonwealth Bank Cup football and ninth by water sports. Watch out for the name Westfield Sports, but they're going to go a step further here today. Particularly due to one of these blokes here. Fairclough, he straightens the attack. I like the way he approaches the defensive line. Well, I think the big thing you have to like about him also is the fact that he's playing in the fullback position, but he's probably handled the football as much as any player out there. So his involvement has been superb, and we've seen him do some good things, very much involved in that last try, throwing the last pass. Whoa! They came for him. He took his eyes off the football, tried to regather. Guess what? It was too late. Some big front on defence there, but the man coming forward with the ball never really had full control of it. And you'll see just at the end of it, takes his eyes off it. And the ball propelled backward, cleaned up by Carly. And now Diaz is called back to the scrum base to feed again. 11 minutes out from full time. Commonwealth Bank Cup from the Parramatta Stadium. It's 22 points to six. And it's getting monotonous, isn't it? Just after I've given Ben Cummins a rap for his passing, He's thrown a shocker, and it was against, again, again, after a scrum win against the feed. It was under some pressure there. The 14 did well, Carly breaking quickly. Cummins through the bad pass, and now Diaz will again have a chance. Well, you see they've only got five players in the scrum, St. John's Park. Yeah. Six against the head for Westfields. One for St. John's. Okay. 10 feeds it off books running well geez had a good game really showing the way for the forwards from his side today and this is the 12 jeffrey mann just short of the 20 books was there again prepared to take the football the reserve in 16 takes it forward sprague and sprague taken now over the top of diaz he flies high Still alive. Oh, he's dropped the ball over the line as Sue. Good work from Diaz. Knocked the ball back straight into the hands of Sue. It looked as though all he had to do was put the ball down, and that may well have been the case. Let's have a look at it from front on. Diaz kicked back to Sue. And the good tackle coming across knocks the ball out. They come back, Westfield, to the 20 metre. They're not in trouble, but they've made a few errors as well. Some fairly promising play from them by the same token. Cummins is on the blind side. Taking it forward, the big number 10. By the name of Dean Condick. They play it through Albertini. Albertini through Cummins, who goes without it. Oh. Well, now, scraps on the mill. I'm just giving this player a rap the last two times he's touched the football. He's come up with mistakes. But he's had a, pr a pretty good game out there, I, I believe. He has made a couple of mistakes. I think the game is Westfield's at the moment. But his last two touches of the ball haven't been as impressive. There's another change made. The number 16, Constandi, going on for Westfield's. And the coach of Westfield's looking to get all their players involved. Pat Moore as Centroni or Citroni gets involved. Takes three defenders to put him down. 
Well, Diaz standing one off the ruck. Sue now feeds it for him. That's the problem. Have a look at that. The forwards for St. John's Park standing around in a bunch there. No organisation. No one really looking to hit the ball forward. They're behind on the scoreboard. So they, they need to get together and support each other. Well, David went into that tackle with his elbow pointed. We want to be careful. Butch, can he score a try for his side? He can't. Half a metre short. Kick through himself. Well, chase for the football. Whoa! Well, you've got to give it to the boy. He really tried to get there. He couldn't. Yeah, it's been a bit of deja vu there. We've seen that from St. John's Park once already. The man trying to get through and just as he's about to get his hand down the ball, the ball kicked clear by the defence. They'll get it back again, but I, I do wonder whether they would be better to, to try and work out their five rucks before just drop rolling the ball in on the last tackle and, and getting it back with the same result as they've just done there. So some undisciplined stuff from both sides as Diaz crosses the 40. 35 metres out from the Westfield line as Sue gets away and comes at them. Good driving defence, brings him to ground. Wearing the nine out there. Kotovsky, they move it now. Centre three-quarter is Durban. Kostandi on, Brander off. They use it again. This is the 10. Isaac David. So within 15, books again. He's been involved every set of six. He crosses the 10 and the turnover. Yes, well, that, that's a play that... They should have known it was the last tackle. He's, he's rung strongly, Books, and he's hurt himself on that tackle, but it was the last, and they had to do better than just a hit up. Diaz should have been getting the football and rolling it into the end goal. They'd had 12 tackles. If they'd have got 18 against Westfields, it would have been difficult to hold them out. Now Westfield Sports in, in a position to get out of their danger, and they've done it very well here. Two or three tackles, and Constanti takes it to the 30 metre line. So Westfields. In front on the scoreboard, as time ticks away and we go inside the six-minute mark, he plays it. Albertini plays dummy half. Cummins now for McHenry. He looks now and finds Fairclough. Fairclough gets between them. He's still going. He ducks under another. David tries to get him and upend him at the same time, in the same motion. In fact, he's injured himself in the tackle, Isaac David. He's down on the 40-metre line. Enterprising play, to say the least, from Fairclough. Brilliant individual stuff. Citroni is sent back, right back into his in-goal area. Great chase from Mamalini. Oh, magnificent tackle. He's been the first man down on, on kick chases all afternoon. Adam Mamaliti going down at speed. And Citroni's got good evasion. He had every opportunity to beat the man, but it was just enthusiasm. And they're pulling him back so that he stays in the in-goal area. That's a great chase and a great result for Westfields. Books. Comes down for Cummins. Cummins comes back, stumbles as he tries to step. He was wrapped up by Selms over the top. Albertini scoots from dummy half. He knocked back. And now Cummins continues with the football. Wrapping it now is the 16. In the form of Constandi. And bundled into touch. This bloke out here, Strack. I hope that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, we've got the boxer shorts on, hasn't he? Boxing trunks. 12-6, the, the scrums. Well, he's taken that from inside the scrum. Penalty goes with St. John's Park. Well, I guess when you're in front, you can try these things as the ice packs come out. There's been some fairly heavy confrontation out there at times. Uh. But you can afford to smile when you're in front. And Condic took the hard yards today. Got a few war wounds there, but I think he'll be missing from the next game. There's another replacement player takes it to blind side, draws plenty of attention. Inside the four-minute zone. Box again, if he hasn't been the best forward on the park. Oh, he's hurt himself in this tackle. He's hurt himself in this tackle. Shame for young boy, he has played extremely well. I'm sure probably just taking the wind out of him here here it is again what is just taking the wind out of him that ball tucked up into the rib cage can hurt they work the blind and this is 10 is isaac david he goes over the halfway 
pass was nearly forward. Now the turnover ordered by Kelvin Jeffs. Replacement player in jumper number 20, Urtovsky. Hope these pronunciations are right. I apologize otherwise. Fairclough. Fairclough. Midway, halfway and 40. Albertini beats one. Makes it to the 40 meter line. 10 meters into St. John's territory. Cummins, McHenry. Now the big chase is on for White. It's going back for the St. John side. He's lost it in the end goal area. This could be another good tackle. Shane White makes the tackle. He cleaned up his mistake well there. Strack. And Sue tries to get the ball away from his own line. And now it's just all incidental stuff. St. John's working the ball out. That's Misa on his replacement player. Trailing 22-6. Too much work to do. Westfields have been very impressive. Their forwards have worked hard. Their backs have been oh, very dangerous. Bush. Oh, he bumped out of three tackles, and then he had a head collision and a half, as you wouldn't believe, and it was a head jolter. And he's back in the fray. Courageous performance by the 13. So Westfields now. They come back. Work across field, Westfield's open pastures. McHenry looks for support and throws it anyway, willy-nilly. You, you just can't do those ones. He couldn't see who was outside him. Well, with one minute to go, he tried to set up his outside man. He was overrun and I think more out of frustration than anything else. The ball's just gone. We'll see probably a couple more plays now before this game winds down. And they have been impressive, Westfield. 12-6. That tells the story. Diaz with the feed. He's been very good for his side as well. The lock forward breaks from the scrum, although he's wearing the 12. He backed down in the lock forward position. This ball was... Oh, well, I thought that was not back. Well, I'll have to disagree. I thought it was a knock on by the number four, Russell Marsh. Makes no difference now. Full time here at Parramatta Stadium with Westfield Sports High School advancing one step closer in the Parramatta Division of the Commonwealth Bank Cup. 22 points to six, Westfield over St. John's, and what a game. There he is, our man of the match, David Fairclough. He'll receive $100 in an account from the Commonwealth Bank, our great sponsors. So, until next time you join us for the Commonwealth Bank Cup, on behalf of Peter Sterling, I'm Mark Warren. Bye for now. Unconscious. Better get a wet towel. No, better get a doctor. It's a Sawyer. But you must have done something to him. I tell you, we were merely talking. But the moment I mentioned Santa Claus, the moment I attacked his delusion, he became violent. I told you he had latent maniacal tendencies. Well, I think this pro proves it. Maybe we better have Dr. Pierce give him another examination. Dr. Pierce? He doesn't know anything about this sort of thing. He's a general practitioner. You must admit this is rather serious. Perhaps we better get a competent psychiatrist. But he's taken dozens of those examinations and pass them all 100%. Well, in view of this, it's possible his condition has changed. I don't think we can take any chances, really, I don't. I can't see any harm in it. If he passes the test, he can return to work immediately. And if he doesn't, well, it, it's better we find out. Oh, and you better have the examination right away before he tells Mr. Ma before Mr. Macy finds out. Oh, yes. Oh, my, yes. You, you explain to Mr. Kringle. After all, you're a friend of his. I won't do it. I can't do it. I've grown very fond of him, and this would be like coming out and telling him that I thought he was insane. No, you don't call this acting normal, do you? Of course I don't. But there are thousands of other old people who aren't normal either. This is going to hurt Chris very deeply, and I don't want...